All right, folks, welcome back to BEG Wrestling. We are here with none other than Mike Machiavello, okay? And here's why I asked you to come on, Mike, because I actually looked up perseverance in the dictionary, and you came up, okay? <laughs> you have an unbelievably unique story, okay? And it seems to be uh, a similar story kind of repeated over your high school early years. Yeah. Struggled. Uh, reached the pinnacle your senior year state yeah. fun, state championship kind of same deal in college yeah. first two years at NC State um, what what is going on what is the the how are you making these transitions <laughs> tell um, us about yourself Mike I'm sorry man <laughs> I gotta let you talk yeah um, well I mean that's hard to kind of just put like one give it one simple like answer I think it's a lot of a lot of different things. I think it's just a culmination of timing, maturity, um, environment, uh, faith, and also hard work just over time, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, you could do, I could dive into each one of those things individually, you know, and it'd be a lot to talk about, but it's, you know, I think a lot of times people just kind of, they set out to pursue something that they're passionate about or feel like is aligned with their purpose. And if you feel like it is truly what you want, and deep down it is, I think you're determined to a degree that regardless of what hurdles kind of come along the way, it doesn't deter you you might think about it but it's something that deep deep down you actually desire not something you say you desire and I think there's a big difference and I think a lot of times people say they want things or they want to pursue something that they think they want but deep down it hmm. might not be and maybe they don't realize that and or maybe they they're lying to themselves and Maybe there's social pressure to pursue something that from a parent, from a family member, or maybe it's what they think they should be doing, but it's not deep, deep down truly what they want. And yeah. So, so could I challenge you or, or yeah. could I translate that almost yeah. and say maybe Mike Machiavello his early years in high school and college might have thought you that's what you loved, but I don't know, maybe you didn't truly love or find that love for it until your latter years. <laughs> yeah. Also a good question. Um, well, I definitely enjoyed wrestling. I definitely tried to quit after my freshman year, not because it was like not something I want didn't want to do. I had fun I in high really school. Enjoyed. Yeah, because you know, freshman. Okay, just to clarify. Yeah, and uh, that was kind of like I did 18 matches as an eighth grader. That was it. That was my first year of wrestling. And then my sophomore year of wrestling, or my freshman year of wrestling, was my first full season. And I just remember cutting weight, and I was like, "Man, cutting weight sucks. I'm not trying to cut weight." And my wrestling coach was like, nah, you're wrestling. So then, <laughs> so then I kept wrestling. But, uh, you know, it, it was uh, it was something that I definitely learned to fall in love with more and more the longer I stayed in it. And uh, But I definitely had a goal. I wanted to be a two-time state champ as a high schooler, and then I also wanted to be a four-time NCAA champ as a NCAA collegiate athlete. And neither of those things happened. But uh, I definitely was determined, and I feel like – there was moments in my career where I definitely hit some hurdles that made me question, like, is this actually what I want? Mm -hmm. Or am I just doing this for X reason, X, Y reason, whatever it is? And I think through those trials and through those things, I at one point decided, yeah, this is what I want. And when you make that decision and you decide that that's what you want, I think you approach things with a different level of determination and you just, you're not willing to give up easily. And usually people who are determined and not willing to give up easily go a long way. And I think you stick with something long enough, you figure it out. Yeah. So, I mean, we all know how challenging the physical aspect of right. wrestling is, but right. I mean, it sounds to me like the mental part is much more difficult, especially competing. We're out here at the Olympic yeah. trainings. Yeah. Um, what, I mean, what, what, <laughs> Has wrestling made you, like, would you say wrestling's made you a better person? And who have you had to kind of rely on and who's been, like, your rock throughout this entire process? <laughs> who's been my rock? 
Um, wrestling's definitely changed me for sure in a lot of amazing ways. It's definitely made me the man that I am today. Wouldn't be who I am without it. You know, I thought I was tough coming out of high school, and then you realize like <laughs> you don't know what tough is, you know. And um, I, I, it's just, it's just, it's made me sharper. It's made me learn a lot of leadership goal like leadership things and it's just taught me a lot about discipline consistency hard work and come, overcoming adversity i think that's what the sport does and it molds your character but who i've relied on the most isn't necessarily a person it's just my faith right like not even like faith in the vision or the goal that i have myself but faith in like god for me has been mm -hmm. something that's really helped me and it's also what I feel like gave me the freedom to compete in a way that helped me understand, like, if you don't get this, it's all good. And I think it just gave me a different different kind of fire. Kind of hard to explain, but um, I feel like when I was losing a lot, coming out of high school, I definitely, like, questioned, like, dang, I suck. Like, man, is this sport for me? Is this really what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, how'd you how'd you persevere through that? I mean... Honestly, God, man, like my faith. And, and why I say that is because, right, like, because of my faith, at one point, as I got more mature, I recognized, like, my performance doesn't define me. And it's not who I am. Wrestling is just something that I do, right? And again, the other part is that my performance doesn't define me. And I think I got security in who I was as a person, as a believer, right? And so now it's like I'm competing because God gave me these amazing talents and abilities and I want to use them to the best of my ability. I'm not using them to validate myself for other people or to, to find security in my wins. It's like I'm already secure in who I am. I'm validated in who I am and and already because of who God says I am and and uh now the losses don't sting as bad. Yeah. I'm not beating myself up. <laughs> I'm not tearing myself down. You I'm not like there's more. Damn, yeah. I'm trash, man. I ain't worth nothing. Like, man, I was weak. I'm a whatever, you know what I mean? Cuz I lose or I didn't perform well. You know what I mean? I'm I'm oh, damn, yeah. I was soft, man. Like, I'm soft. You know, I'm not saying that. I'm just it's a different internal dialogue. And I think, you know, my faith being that thing that changed that, I think that's kind of what carried me through the the tough moments. And so now sure, it's like, yeah. oh, it don't even, it's just ping, ping, just bounces yeah. right off, right? A loss or, or, or a failure right at one of my attempts, it is what it is. I'm gonna just keep going because yeah. it, it don't change who I am. It doesn't make me any less worthy as a person. Like I'm gonna just keep going. Like I'm still determined, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so there's like a different type of endurance, right? Like, yeah, mental. I mean, you, you yeah, just. Sure. I mean, it sounds to me like you just you love who you you fell in love with who you are as a person. You know yeah, who you are as yeah. a person. You're secure with it, and um, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of gratification in that. I do want to ask you. Yeah. Your NCAA finals match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to ask you what your mindset was going into that because not only was that for an NCAA championship, yeah, but that was yeah. also, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, to put NC State on the podium as a medal team. Yeah. It all came down to your match. Yeah. Uh, all these things are running through your, your mind before this match, right? Yeah. Are, are you silenced? Are you listening to pump-up music? What What's going through your head there? Yeah, so um, honestly, I, had been, I met with a sports psych for four years while I was in really? college. Yeah, yeah, Her wow. name was Michelle Joshua. That's fascinating. Um, and uh, she has a private practice now. So feel free to reach out to me on Instagram and I can send it to you. If those well, I might young need athletes that. I might that <laughs> <laughs> athletes are interested in working with her. I still work with her when I can. And um, But she, she was amazing. And I think when I made the decision, this is what I want. After I had questioned, like, is this where I'm supposed to be? Is this... Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? When I finally made the decision, yes, this is what I want to do. I was all in right after that. And I just kind of like, I was like, um, well, let me leave no stone unturned. No stone unturned. And uh, we had a, NC State's athletic department had a sports psychology department. And she was hmm. our sports psychologist. So I just started meeting with her just because, man, I don't think I need a sports psych. But like, if I don't accomplish my goals five years from now, well, I say, maybe I should have tried. And 
regardless of what happens, I don't want to think that. So I'm just going to try it so that way I can't think that. And that was my mindset starting those. And so, you know, over the course of four years, we kind of like learned to develop a process oriented focus instead of an outcome oriented focus. And I think mm, I like by the time I got to the tournament, I was in such a zone that like every single match to me, I was approaching the same. It didn't matter if it was the finals, the semis, the quarters, first round, ACC finals, doesn't matter. I had the same mental approach. It's like score as many points as possible. I, obviously winning was what I wanted to do, but I, I shoved that. That wasn't my, my primary focus. Like try and be present, try and be where my feet are and be aggressive, right? And so yeah. I I I, uh, I wasn't really thinking about the fi- who I was wrestling. I wasn't really thinking about what the team race was. I was listening to some Fifty Cent <laughs> with my headphones okay. on. Okay. Oh yeah. All right. You know, in All the right. zone, and uh, yeah, I was just ready to go, man. I was locked in, and I, I honestly I had a ton of fun. It was weird. Like uh, I think they started playing some hip hop hop song after I walked out on the stage, and I remember thinking like. Oh, I'm I'm I jam with this. Like whoever's on the ox oh, in the arena. Swag. I know. Whoever's, I love on, it, man. whoever's yeah. on the ox in the arena, I'm <laughs> I'm feeling this. And so I was just kind of like I was so in the moment. I even started bobbing my head while I was walking b- back and forth on the mat, like while we were waiting for the commercial break to end so they could start the match. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh yeah, I'm feeling this. I was just really feeling myself and I, and I was just hmm. so in the moment. I, I didn't think about the stakes. I didn't think about the really? score. I was just like I'm finna send it, you know? And so I, I really felt like I left everything that I had out there. Well, I have to read this quote because Kevin, he, he comes on our show a lot, and yeah. uh, he sent this to me. Um, he wanted me to touch base on how your final takedown of your college career yeah. seemed to uh, perfectly epitomize your entire career as a whole. Um, yeah. And he said, um, may not have accomplished all, all the dreams that you had, but the process but at the end uh you best believe that mike mock saves his best for last including state title as a senior in high school ncaa champion as a senior um and then final x finalist in your fifth year yeah and i'm not done yet so this is a common theme man i mean you uh if you don't succeed at first just give it time because you you will figure it out eventually right i mean my goodness man that is uh quite a unique story i mean you said you almost quit as a freshman in high school. What about I in almost college? quit after my like freshman year because I had lost. No, not after my freshman. Year. I think I, at one point I had thought about quitting within the first two years because I lost all my wrestle offs the first two years. I ended up getting the starting spot as a freshman. Um, didn't qualify for the national tournament. I think I went zero two at the ACC tournament and. I wrestled Jacob Casper for last place. Funny enough, who's in the WWE now? That's my guy. Shout out to <laughs> Julius Creed. But uh, um, the next year, I lost my wrestle off to an incoming freshman named Nikki Hall, who's a Wyoming Sim, yeah. Super 32 finalist, national prep champ. And that's when I really started questioning, like, this kid's a year younger than me. Yes. He's beating me. I feel like I'm working so hard. And that was I'm a seeing, sophomore, right? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I was working so hard, and I was not seeing any fruit, man. And so, like, yeah, naturally I did kind of, like, question. I was I was confused as yeah. to what was going on because I felt like I was putting in the time and I felt like I was doing everything right. And so, yeah, of course I was confused and, and couldn't figure out why I wasn't getting the results I wanted. And so, um, but I think it was just deeper, man. I just think uh, it was my perspective and I think also the reality was I just needed time to develop as an athlete you know mm-hmm. I started late in the sport I was from the state of North Carolina I didn't wrestle for a club I didn't wrestle year round the only months that I wrestled all four years of high school is from November to February wow I played uh, football you don't see that nowadays from June all the way to November because we had a good football team down south hey, you look like a football player <laughs> man. I played safety you know and then uh we made it to playoffs, so like I started, I missed the first couple of weeks of wrestling season, so I started in November, and then the state tournament in North Carolina is in February, and then once the season was over, I was playing uh, for a travel soccer team from like January all the way to April. Three sport athlete. So all four years, I was a three sport athlete, and I only wrestled for those few months 
ever, all four years. Didn't wrestle for a club, whatever. So like, the reality was I was green. I was inexperienced yeah. and I was super raw. And so, that's the other thing that I just had refused to accept and didn't didn't maybe wasn't mm-hmm. even aware of. And so, as I stayed with it longer, I started to get more technical. I started to develop more feel. I, I started to understand the nuance of the sport. I, I My wrestling IQ grew. I understood tactics and strategy a little bit better. Yeah. I figured out the details of what it is that I want to do and my style and, and the system that I use thanks to you know my coaches. And so like it just it just took time. And I think I was so impatient, and I think most people are. Mm-hmm. You want to see success right away. Oh, yeah. You know, especially but that just ain't how it works, man. Like, yeah, man. That's uh, you got to stick with it. You got to put in the time. Well, it seems like though. I mean, everything that you've been through. Yeah. Does it almost feel more rewarding now because of everything that you have gone through to achieve the things that you have? Yeah. Nothing's been handed to you. You've had to go man. out and work yeah. and earn everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so in the end of the day, I mean, to me, I think the world needs a lot more. Mike Machiavello's out there because I think you're the uh, American story here, really the American yeah. dream, man. If at first you don't succeed, go back again, and right. you are the epitome of that. So, um, all right, Mike. Before uh, I let you go, I do want to ask, like, what yeah. uh, what's in your future? What can we expect to see yeah. ahead of you? So, you know, I uh, I'm going to compete at World Team Trials in September, and I'm going to want to compete at world championships in october okay um but uh you know i I was uh sitting on a couple opportunities you know i I got an mma as an option which is something that i've seriously been considering i have a management team that i've been signed with for a little bit of like a year and a half and uh you know they they manage mike chandler who's got conor mcgregor coming up and so like i have great management that i trust and um but then also right like if you know i had a wwe tryout in December of 22 and got offered a contract in January 23 so really? I ended up turning that down because they wanted me to start right away but I decided to keep going and glad I did because then I made my first final X That's right. so glad I That's turned right. it down you know, <laughs> right. glad I turned it down and uh, you know I hope that uh, you know there's more good reason in the fall you know coming up at World Team Trials World Championships I hope you know hope uh, prove some people wrong and you know prove the people who believe me right actually better you know, I hope I prove I like the people that. who believe in me right. And I don't care about the doubters. I hope I prove the people who believe in me right. Yeah. And uh, but uh, but yeah. So like you know, I, there's a lot to consider. But uh, as of right now, I plan on competing still in wrestling. Okay. You know, I love the sport, and uh, you know, obviously coaching is an option too, and that's something I've seriously been considering. Yeah, I think I have a lot to give to the sport and to to people that are in it, and I, and I hope that you know I can help athletes get better. So. You know, just, uh, you know, I, I don't even know, to be honest, what's next. But yeah. I do know. You have as options of, on options, I though. do know as of right now, you know, I am competing at World Team Trials and uh, hopefully getting ready for World Championships in October. So that's all I know for now. Okay. But, uh, you know, but th- that's kind of what's on the horizon. So. Well, I'll say this. I think you would succeed in the WWE. I think you would <laughs> succeed in the UFC. Yeah. But selfishly. Dude, I would be saying wrestling somehow, yeah, some yeah, way. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we need you yeah. in the sport here, man. Yeah, we yeah. need that more of your personalities and everything. But yeah. uh, I was just going to say, you know, selfishly, I hope you stay in wrestling because, yeah. and maybe even especially coaching, because yeah. someone uh, with your kind of background, I think, could could likely even better help some of the youth kids in America here. Yeah. Because wrestling, I mean, wrestling is a story of attrition and perseverance i yeah, mean yeah. At, at whatever level you are i mean i've wrestled a little bit myself obviously nice but hey i know how hard it is there every day man yeah. every practice so yeah. someone like you to be able to share your story yeah. uh and reflect with with the youth i think would be incredible yeah no i appreciate that man and i will say this too i think uh it is a lot easier to do something that's difficult if you love it fall in love with the process not just the process but also just what you're doing like the sport of wrestling yeah like i think people are so focused on man i'm gonna have to be super disciplined and i'm gonna have to be sacrificed so much and i'm gonna miss out on all this but it's or i'm gonna have to be super committed but it's like you don't have to do nothing 
You do it because you want to do it. Do it because you love it, yeah. Yeah, you do it because that's what you want to do. You made that decision. (laughs) No one's forced you to do anything. You decided this is what you want to do. You love what you do. And and that's just part of what it is. And that's part of what made you love it in the first place. Yeah. And I think when people can look at things from that lens, especially in a sport like wrestling, it's like that's already hard enough, right? Mm. It makes it a little bit easier. You know, not every day is going to be perfect. Your body's definitely going to be feeling it because yeah. <laughs> the sport's brutal, man. But I think if you love what you do, it's a lot easier to to hang in the trenches. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, let me say this. Yeah. And maybe this is I'm completely wrong here, but yeah. to me, yeah. talking through this with you, it sounds like you know maybe your first two years in college you weren't in love with wrestling, and then you fell in love with it for sure. Yeah. And I I don't know, man. Yeah. I mean, I was. You I was going to say, I mean, back in school, I yeah. usually didn't try at the start of every year, and I really picked it up at the end just yeah. to get my grades. Yeah. I, I don't think it was a case of you just not trying, right? <laughs> no, nah, I definitely was trying. I definitely always worked hard. But, you know, it's funny about saying that now that I think about it. Um, I think I, I had, like, some D2 football offers or some top 25 programs ah. to play safety. And I also – could have played like soccer at a JUCO school and transferred. Well, yeah, because you were playing school. three sports, right? Yeah, and I was pretty good at all three. And I genuinely like I went to a ID camp for soccer when I was in high school at UNC Chapel Hill as a freshman in high school. I because I played for a travel team and I had teammates. One teammate played at UNCW, another played for um, some other schools, and, and so I, I played for a good team in soccer. But then also my football team was good. Sam Howell played quarterback at my high school. Get my, out of here. My teammate Kevin Saxton, who was our quarterback is Andy Reid's offensive assistant for the Kansas City Chiefs. So we had a good football team, and I could have played college football at a smaller school, maybe was, smaller D1 say. level. But, like, I chose wrestling because my dream was always to be a D1 athlete. Hmm. It wasn't because I loved the sport. It was because I wanted to be a D1 athlete. Really? And so I picked NC State because it was a big D1 school. Yeah. And that was what was attractive to me. Yeah. And I'm like, I always want to be a D1 athlete. All these football offers are D2. All these soccer offers are smaller schools. Wrestling is the only sport that I have a D1 <laughs> look at. So I'm like, that was my dream, so that's why I'm going to pick wrestling. That's literally right. how I made the decision. And so I wow. think when I got there, I had goals to be a four-time national champ. But then it was like, I think you just kind of like, yeah, I'm just going to work hard and it's going to work out. And it's like... Nah, reality Not smacks you in the face. Yeah. And then again, it's like you actually have. Then I think at one point I just like, I I made the decision. I guess not for the wrong reason, but it wasn't because I loved the sport and I mm-hmm. loved the wrestling. And that's why I want to keep doing it. It was because yeah. I want to be a D one athlete. Yep. And so you know, you saying that actually is right. Like at some point, I had to decide: is this what I love, and is this what I want to do? Yeah. And it was. And when I made that decision. It made perfect it, it sense cha- now. It changed my commitment. It changed my, you know, it changed everything, like, on my outlook. And then also, right, the faith aspect, right, understanding who I am as a person. And mm-hmm. and that that plays a huge role, too, because, like I said, you take all the L's on the chin. On the chin right? Absolutely, man. You know, it reminds me, I, back in high school, I wrestled, and then I ended up picking football over wrestling because that's, the football players got all the chicks. <laughs> but in hindsight, dude, I wish I stuck with the wrestling. You know what I mean? But talking about making the wrong choice right. for the wrong reasons. Right, or, right. You know what I mean? But, but that goes back to what I was saying in the beginning. Is it what you actually want yeah, to do? Yeah, well. Right? And so it wasn't. people got to, you know, reflect. You got to think a little bit, like, and, and think a little deeply. Like, you know, is this actually what I want? You know? Because if yeah. it's not, it's going to be hard, man. Because <laughs> you don't actually want it. And yeah, that's why people fade out in the long run. Because yeah. at, at one point they realize, like, they take, you know, failure or loss after loss after loss. And it's just like, man, I realize I actually don't want this. Yeah. And and dealing with this isn't fun. But if it is what you want, dealing with that's a lot different. Mm-hmm. And, and you don't give up as easily. I mean, so if you're watching out there, kids. Yeah. You need to you need to ask yourself, okay? Because right. I think we've kind of uncovered just right. if you don't if you're not doing something for the true love of it, right. it's, it's not going to last. Right. I mean, it's not going to be sustainable, right? Yeah. Unless you fall in love with it and, and truly enjoy what you're doing. Um, and also, give it a chance, though. Give it time. You don't fall in love with things right away. That's true. Yeah. Right. Right. You don't fall in love with a person right away. You don't even know them yet. How are you going to fall in love with a sport? 
after one week of practice, you don't even understand the all of the intangibles that it could, that it brings and the community that it creates and the brotherhoods that then the relationships that it develops and the connections that you make over time and the lessons that you learn it's like you only get to experience what the sport is truly like if you stick in it long enough and so if you're in the sport and you're struggling to figure out whether or not you love it stick with it a little bit longer give it some time before you decide is this what I want to do because it takes time to figure out if, if this is what I want and and uh just like anything else yeah maybe maybe i should have said do it for the right reasons right and that'll allow yourself the opportunity to either fall in love with it or not yeah maybe don't pick a sport just because you want a girl's number or something you know what i mean but <laughs> hey look man if you win in a wrestler you're gonna get a girl's number. that's true <laughs> you know that's true yeah. it doesn't matter what sport you're doing if you're winning like You'll find you'll probably have a maybe that's the problem. I wasn't winning in wrestling. <laughs> I, was, I don't know, but um, man, just kidding, just kidding. I'm like, what do you think? I have this uh, first time here at Spook, Spooky Nook. Yeah, first time here at Spooky Nook uh, Sports. First time in Lancaster. I mean, there's a ton of PA that I've yet to visit, but uh, it's cool, man. You know, there's Amish country. You know, oh, yeah. a lot. Of, I see some well, horse I'm and PA buggies. Boy. Yeah, oh, so. nice, man. <laughs> I know all about them horse and buggies, man. Yeah, Let man. me tell. <laughs> <laughs> But it's cool, man. I went to the Amish farmer market, farmers market with Hayden Zilmer, and you know nice. it, it was really cool. And we went to like a, a little store. I ended up buying like a nice little leather wallet for like fifty five bucks. You know, start put some my oh, cards yeah. in there. You know, so it was cool, man. Get and yourself I, some Amish furniture. You want quality furniture? Yo, we went to one spot, and I'm like, I feel like I'm at Home Goods. Yeah, <laughs> yo, it was. It, they do a really good job, man. So, but I, I, I love PA, man. It's cool. The weather this week has been unreal, too. Oh yeah, it has. Super hot. Sun's been out the whole time. Nice. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't get used to that. But, yeah, uh, but but it's good, man. I, I, and this venue's insane. So I'm, I'm thankful and glad that we got to train here and compete here this week. And um, you know, like I said, I've just been here to help the guys, you know, get them ready, whatever they need. And, yeah. and uh, I'm excited to see how our Olympic team does, man. I think they're going to be do really, really well. Yeah. And, and Mike, how about, okay. Yeah. How about you, do, after you do make your decision? Yeah. I, how about, can I get you back on the show? Yeah, of course, man. Absolutely. Talk about it? Yeah. Because this has been incredible, man. Yeah. Some deep thought here. Yeah. Like, absolutely. I've really man. enjoyed this. Yeah. So. Thanks, man. But I got to go home. I got a two-hour drive home. <laughs> do your thing, man. So. Yeah, I appreciate awesome. you having me. Yeah, man. It's been, yeah. been fun. Yeah. Well, it's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Absolutely.